Have you been putting off making yourself a new leather belt? If your existing belt looks anything like the one I have here in my hands, I'd say it is definitely time. Hi, I'm Jeff Williams, and I'm gonna show you today why Sedgwick leather is a terrific choice for making your next belt, whether it be for yourself, as a special gift, or perhaps for resale. I encourage you to Google online leather belts made from Sedgwick leather and see the prices they are commanding. You will see that they sell online anywhere from $50 up to $100, depending on how they have been finished. Sedgwick leather is known worldwide as one of the finest British leathers available in the marketplace today for manufacturers of fine leather goods. Our first step is to strip out an inch and a half blank. This is done by using the strap cutter. It's a terrific tool for cutting strips anywhere from one eighth of an inch out to four inches. The most important thing is to have a straight edge on your bend before you attempt this. One of the easiest ways to determine the proper length to cut your belt strip is by using a, an existing belt that you already have. As a rule of thumb, the buckle end will have a fold over of about three inches, and then you'll want to mark your center hole on the belt, and then you'll go another five inches beyond that to tip the belt. Our line of strap and punches are the best way to give a nice clean cut and a professional look to your belts. I'm using a multi-size punch with this project, but you can also choose from punches that are specifically made for a particular width of your straps. Candy Leather offers a variety of acrylic templates to assist with the production of your product. With this belt, we are using the belt-in template, which facilitates us with marking the holes for the maps that will secure the buckle. Once we have completed the buckle end, we can use the other part of the template for marking the holes on the end that will be going through the buckle itself. Next, we are going to use an oval drive punch to punch through the five holes that we previously marked with a scratch hole. We are now going to punch the four holes that are needed to secure the buckle on the other end of the belt strip using a mini drive punch. To get a nice professional edge to your finished products, I recommend that you use one of our Pro Edge Bevelers. This tool is pushed along the edge of the leather at a slight angle to round off the leather edges. After we have finished edging all sides of the belt, we will now move on to slicking the edges. To prepare this, we are going to add a little bit of moisture to the edges of the leather so that we can then come back with the multi-size wood slicker to burnish the edges. Being that this leather has been tanned with some natural oils and waxes, it takes the burnishing tool beautifully, as you can see how it starts to get a nice, slick, burnished edge. At this point, the buckle end of the leather is too thick for it to fold properly. We will need to take a safety bubbler to skive the edges of the leather from the middle of the holes down to the tip of the belt with a slow, consistent effort. At this point, we are now ready to apply our edge dressing. We will be using edge paint to finish our edges, to give it a little bit more durability, and also give it a nice finished look. We are applying it with the edge roller pin. If you are not gonna be using a trophy buckle, you will definitely need to add a keeper to your finished belt to secure the belt in. We are simply gonna cut a strip about a quarter of an inch wide and then we will come back and skive it with the safety bubbler again to get it down to the proper thickness. It's easy to determine the proper length that your keeper needs to be. Simply fold your belt blank over so that you have two layers, wrap your keeper around it, make it nice and snug, and then make an indention on the keeper as where it needs to be cut. To come back 
with a heavy duty stapler, fold or keep her over, line up the edges, and apply a staple. Let's rotate it over and add one more staple for extra security. Snaps or rivets can be used to secure your buckle in. Personally, I prefer snaps because they give you the flexibility to change out buckles if you so desire. For this belt, we are going to use the multi-purpose Sigma type snaps. They are very easy to set with the proper setter. Once you have successfully set the stud end and the socket into the snap, you can then feed your buckle and your keeper into place and securely snap it together. Well, there you go. We have our finished product from start to finish. You can see just how simple this was to create. If you have some upcoming leather projects, leather belts that do not require any tooling, I strongly suggest that you consider this leather as your next choice. I guarantee that you'll be very pleased with the quality of this leather.